Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Friedland. Before we get started, I have some questions for you. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night feeling stress or anxiety? Your heart's pounding, you're sweating, you feel amped up. Sometimes you feel so anxious that you can't get back to sleep. You have thoughts that keep going around and around in your head, and sometimes they won't stop and it takes hours for you to get back to sleep. Do you ever find yourself flipping out at your partner or your kids, saying things or acting in ways that you later regret? Somehow, they have a knack for pushing your buttons and you wish you could feel more in control and communicate in ways that you feel truly heard and get the respect and attention that you deserve. Do you feel overwhelmed and stressed in your work, with way too much to do and not enough time to do it? The stress eats away at your productivity and you find yourself unable to focus or concentrate on the one big project you know you need to make progress on. Instead, you find yourself distracted on Facebook or poking around on the internet doing research or procrastinating by finishing the small tasks on your list. Rather than making the key phone calls or making true headway on the project or closing your deals to move ahead. And then, at the end of the day you feel burnt out and exhausted. After working all day and driving the kids to the activities, you cannot find the energy to get out and exercise. And then it's dinner time. So instead of eating something healthy, you grab a burger and fries or pizza and soda with your kids and tell yourself, I'll get to the gym on the weekend, but you never quite get there. Does it seem like you're getting more frazzled? Do your negative thoughts, feelings and behaviors seem to getting more powerful and more easily triggered? You may be feeling like your life is getting out of control, that you're stressed out and it's just not as much fun anymore. You feel like things have gotten off track and you have that gnawing sense that your relationships, your health and your well-being and your work and your livelihood are all at risk or are suffering. It's all out of alignment with what you really want for your life, what you were hoping to accomplish and how you really wanted to live your life. What you really want is a life that's full of rich, stimulating and loving relationships, both with your loved ones at home and those you work with. You want a life of vibrant health and wellness, where you feel energized and strong enough to go for a run or a strenuous hike, where your body and brain are working like a well-oiled machine and you're experiencing unprecedented levels of productivity and creativity in your career and it seems like there's just nothing that you can't do. You may be doing well financially, but the real rewards come from doing a job well done and finding meaning in it. But finding that alignment feels elusive and it seems to get lost among all the stuff you have to do day in and day out. It can really be difficult to find your path again because of all the challenges you're facing. Well, if you've been struggling with stress in your life, then welcome to the club. Let me show you a bit of data to show you that you are certainly not alone. This is data from the American Psychological Association Stress in America survey which may well generalize to the experience of other fast-paced, developed or industrialized countries. In the survey, approximately 1,600 people were asked about their experience with stress. 24% of individuals report that they are extremely stressed. 51% reported that they are moderately stressed. So literally, this snapshot suggests that 75% of us are stressed out. And then, not surprisingly with what's been going on in the economy, about half of us report that our stress has increased over the last five years. And if you're feeling the effects of stress in your life, you may be surprised to discover that the magnitude of this effect may be bigger than you ever imagined. Recent research shows that stress has a massive impact on your health, relationships and productivity. For example, starting with health, New research reports that the greater the level of stress, the more likely a person is to die of heart disease, cancer and external causes of death like accidents or injuries. These findings have been replicated in other studies too. One of the other large and influential studies that also bears mentioning is the Interheart study which evaluated almost 30,000 people in 52 countries on their risk factors for heart attacks. It found stress to be the third most impactful risk factor for predicting heart attack. So how does this data manifest itself in real life? 
will the effects of stress show up all too often in the doctor's office? Just take a guess, what percentage of visits to primary care doctors do you think relate to conditions that are either directly or indirectly related to stress? This number is huge. Research suggests that as much as 75 to 90% of visits to primary care doctors are for stress-related conditions. And here's an incomplete list of some of these conditions. Not surprisingly, your primary care doctor sees conditions related to mental health, like anxiety, addiction, depression, panic disorder, and social phobia. They also see the effects of stress on neurological conditions like stroke, dizziness, migraines, and cardiovascular conditions like hypertension and heart attacks. Stress raises stress hormone levels like adrenaline and cortisol. This and the effect of stress on lifestyle behavior change partly explains how it raises blood pressure and affects cardiovascular risk and leads to diseases such as obesity and diabetes. But how does stress relate to immune-related conditions? Well, there's a whole area of science called psychoneuroimmunology, which means that the way you think actually influences how your nervous and immune systems function. For example, if your body is releasing a lot of stress hormones due to severe stress, the stress hormones may weaken the ability of your immune system to combat viruses, bacteria, or may exacerbate immune-related conditions like psoriasis and rheumatoid arthritis. So now you know what stress can do to your body and mind and how it can bring you to see your doctor. But here's the sad joke. When you step into your doctor's office with your stress-related condition, what do you discover? You may discover that you own the second most stressed out person in the room because your doctor is often more stressed out than you are. And this can stress you out even more. Your doctor may be running behind trying to catch up with all their patients they need to see and you may well be the catch-up patient. So they're backing out of the room and to move on they write a prescription. So all of a sudden depression becomes a Prozac deficiency, back pain becomes an Advil deficiency, headaches are a tryptan deficiency, and nobody is getting to the root of the problem, which is the underlying stress that is either initiating or exacerbating these health-related conditions to begin with. And in that respect, the healthcare system is broken. We're not getting to the foundation by dealing with the stress and talking about prevention to stop these conditions from developing in the first place. This is why self-care and your ability to navigate your own stress modify your health habits and engage in healthy lifestyle behavior change is absolutely crucial to optimizing your health. But unfortunately, research shows that stress can cause a major barrier here too. This slide is just remarkable to me. This comes from the same Stress in America survey we mentioned earlier. What the survey finds is that your ability to successfully engage in healthy behavior change is affected by your level of stress. Here, high stress is represented in orange, moderate stress in green, and low stress is in blue. What you see is that your ability to actually make lifestyle change, for example, get more sleep or lose weight or exercise more, eat a healthier diet, totally tracks according to your stress level. So for example, on your ability to lose weight, if you have high stress, only 43% say they can successfully engage in a weight loss program. By contrast, for those who report low stress, 77%, more than three quarters, report that they can engage in losing weight. So if you have high stress and don't know how to navigate it effectively, your likelihood of successfully optimizing your health is relatively low. That means even if you have the best of intentions, if you don't take care of your stress first, your new diet or workout won't get you the results that you're seeking. Consequently, learning how to navigate stress is absolutely foundational to any wellness program and is crucial for you to be able to fully optimize your health. Moving on from your health, stress also has a major impact on your relationships. 
You probably know firsthand how stress can unsettle or erode your relationships with your spouse, kids, family, friends, colleagues and clients. Research supports what you already know. As a snapshot of this, for example, a 2009 review of the research found that stress is a major threat to marital satisfaction and its longevity. One study even showed how stress as measured by levels of adrenaline and a hormone that stimulates the release of cortisol in the blood of 90 newlywed couples predicted divorce and marital dissatisfaction 10 years later. So stress really impacts our health and our relationships. Let's now turn to its impact at work. With its negative impact on our ability to think creatively and focus, research also shows that stress takes a big bite out of our productivity at work. The Stress in America survey finds that over 50% of employees report that they lose productivity specifically due to stress. If you're working for yourself, where the ups and downs of your business can add massive amounts of stress itself, this stress is not only eating at you, but it's eating at your bottom line too. If you're a business owner and employ others, or you're working in human resources, it's crucial to be aware just how much stress in the workplace may be costing your company. For example, if you look at job turnover, 40% of job turnover is due to stress. Healthcare expenditures are 50% greater for workers who report high levels of stress. The cost of unanticipated absenteeism is estimated to be about $600 per worker per year, with an estimated 60% due to job stress. And then, when you look at the total cost in absenteeism, lower productivity, staff turnover and health-related expenses, this is conservatively estimated to be about $200 billion per year. So then, with all of the effect that stress has on our health, relationships and productivity, how do we learn to best navigate stress so that we not only reduce it, but just as importantly, learn how to harness healthy aspects of it so we also can thrive at peak performance and experience vibrant health, rich and meaningful relationships, and greater creativity, productivity, and fulfillment in the work that we do. What are the key skills, assets, and solutions we can best leverage to do this? Before we can come up with a solution to leverage a powerful approach for doing so, we first need to understand the relationship between stress and performance. When I ask people in my programs what they think this relationship looks like, many think it looks like this, a straight line down. That is, when you have no stress, you perform at your best, and when you have high stress, you perform at your worst. But this is not the relationship at all. We've known since the early 1900s from the paradigm-shifting research by the psychologists Robert Yerkes and John Dodson that this relationship is a bell curve. What this curve shows that if you are overwhelmed with stress, you don't perform very well. But what's initially less intuitive is that if you have too little stress, if you're bored, apathetic or disengaged, you don't perform very well either. So how do you leverage this understanding to help drive you towards the peak of the curve, towards peak performance, where you can thrive and grow and embrace your challenges at the limit of what you can do? Well, two broad skill sets are needed. The first are the critical skills and practices needed to recover rapidly from stress when you're overwhelmed by it. This enables you to move up towards the peak of the curve from the right. The second are skills and practices that are needed to help you fully engage, focus and sustain growth in the areas of your life that are most important to you. Learning how to do this enables you to move up towards the peak of the curve from the left. So then, how do you do this? 
What assets can you leverage to help you effectively navigate stress and avoid all its consequences we've discussed to focus on what's truly most important in your life and thrive with peak performance? Well, you already have one asset in particular, the most important asset that's always available to you. Can you guess what this is? Join me again in the next video in the series and I'll share the answer with you.